Bonjour from Place de la République. This is Josh Friedman at Republic Square in Paris on presidential election day in France. Today, French voters are deciding between Emmanuel Macron of the nominally independent En Marche movement and Marine Le Pen, the longtime leader of Four Nacional, France's renowned nationalist party. And Le Pen has been trying to distance herself a little bit from the party leading up to the election. Today's vote is the runoff vote, so there will be a new president decided based on the outcome of the election today, but the vote is more than just a choice of a new president, it is at least symbolically a referendum on France's membership in the European Union, as well as a referendum on the clashing ideologies of globalism and nationalism. Macron is, in a sense, a poster child for globalism or globalization. He is a former investment banker for the Rothschild Group, and he recently served as France's economy minister, and he was also an attendee at the elite Bilderberg group for a few years back, at least that was reported. Uh, Macron favors a European Union with a strong central government in Brussels as well as the Euro currency and he supports uh, EU measures that, at least to some extent, dictate budgeting and other government policy here in France. On the other hand, Le Pen is a longtime advocate of getting out of the European Union as well as ditching the Euro. Le Pen right now is using a little bit of a softer tune. She's advocating in this campaign for shifting powers away from Brussels back to the member states and having a European Union without a strong central government that is more of an alliance of European countries. Uh, whether either one wins, uh, they'll probably run into a lot of difficulties with their agendas. Uh, Macron is coming up against a rising anti-European Union sentiment, both in France and uh, across the continent. Last year there was the Brexit referendum and uh, the UK is now in the process of leaving the European Union because of the results of that vote. And now with France, as a result of disgruntlement with mass immigration and the frequent terrorism that's been occurring in the country, especially over the past couple years, there is a whole lot of Euroscepticism and in the first round of voting that took place a couple weeks ago, uh, anti-European Union candidates accounted for nearly 50% of the vote. Uh, nonetheless, Macron is the heavy favorite. He, going into election day, is up about 20% in polls. Some polls over the past couple weeks suggested he had even more of a lead over Le Pen as pundits predicted that people would rally against, or French voters would rally against Le Pen, and even if they don't really support Macron, that they would vote for him anyway to stop Le Pen from entering the Elysee Palace. 
Uh, however, there are striking similarities to not just Brexit, but the U.S presidential election of last year in which Hillary Clinton was the front runner and was up in all the polls and major media was suggesting that Donald Trump had no chance of defeating her but Trump defied the polls he won and that too was a battle between uh, the ideologies of globalism or globalization and nationalism which Trump President Trump is uh, changing his tune a little and saying that he is both a nationalist and a globalist. And if Le Pen were to pull off the upset, it would be interesting to see whether or to what extent she too would change her approach. Because France is not like the United Kingdom in the sense that France is a core member of the EU, it's a founding member of the EU. Some people say that if, if uh, Le Pen were to win today, or even if, uh, I mean if simply Le Pen were to win, but if France were to leave the EU, looking forward a lot, that the European Union would crumble. France, unlike the UK, is a member of the Eurozone, so there's really a lot at stake for the future of the European Union and the continent based on the vote today. Le Pen models herself in a similar fashion as the lady whose sculpture is standing here at Place de la République. Uh, they, this is a fictional character named Marianne, which is a similar name to Le Pen's full first name of Marion. Uh, Marianne is the symbol of the French Republic. As I try to give you a little bit better of a glimpse of this sculpture on a foggy day, here in Paris, as you can see, it says the public say. Le Pen desires a France in which nation-state, not Brussels, dictates policy, as I was discussing earlier. Le Pen is arguing that either, that one way or another, a woman will be ruling France. That's what she said in the last debate. She said either she will be ruling France or German Chancellor Angela Merkel will be ruling France. Merkel is widely viewed as the most powerful person in the European Union. And she calls a lot of the shots, even though she is the Chancellor of Germany and not a, an official EU executive. Looking back to a couple weeks ago in the first round of the voting, Macron received 24% of the vote. Le Pen got a little more than 21%. And because they came in first and second place, there there's an interesting case in this runoff. This runoff is the first presidential runoff uh, during the modern Fifth Republic of France, in which there is no representative from a major party. France's current president, Francois Hollande, the socialist, is largely discredited, very well, un uh, very much unliked in the country. He decided not to run. Francois Fillon, who is the candidate for the other major party, the Republican Party, was engulfed in a scandal throughout the campaign, or at least in recent months, involving him giving jobs to 
his wife and allegedly other relatives and giving them government pay. You can hear a little traffic action here in France on election day. Anyway, uh, the scandal cost Fillon. He received uh, about 20% of the vote, did not make it to the runoff. And a socialist or communist, depending on who you ask, Jean-Luc Mélenchon came from out of nowhere and too received nearly 20% of the vote. Mélenchon is anti-European or anti-EU in similar fashion to Le Pen, although he is described as far left and Le Pen is described as far right. It is unclear whether Le Pen will be able to rally Mélenchon voters on her behalf. But anyway, so we're left with a runoff election in which there is no representative of the two major parties. A lot is changing in France. There is a lot of resistance towards the French establishment, toward uh, the European Union, complaints about mass migration and terrorism and uh, deindustrialization in the rural areas. We'll see if that could translate into an upset victory for Le Pen. Most people are forecasting it will not, but regardless of what happens today, I will get back to you with the results and I'll try to give you some footage of the celebration as well as it's expected that there will be protests regardless of who wins. So for now, au revoir from Place de la République here in Paris.